Dear students of class 10th, in the last class we studied about Alauddin Khilji, Khilji's dynasty, and today we will study about Tughlaq dynasty. There were three important sultans of Tughlaq dynasty Gyasuddin Tughlaq, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, and Firoz Tughlaq. Today we will study about Gyasuddin Tughlaq and Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Gyasuddin Tughlaq became the Sultan of Delhi Sultanate under Tughlaq dynasty in 1320 by Kalim Khusro Shah, the last ruler, ruler of Khiliji dynasty. And he assumed the title of Gyasuddin Tughlaq Shah Ghazi. He was the first ruler of Delhi Sultanate to add the name of Gaji after his name. Gyasuddin Tughlaq wanted to increase the income of his state treasury and for that he gave protection to the cultivators and agriculture. He instructed the Diwane Vizar not to increase the taxes, not to increase land revenue beyond one tenth or one eleventh in a year in any ikta. His message and instructions were clear to increase the taxes gradually and it should spread for a long period of time. He was here against Alauddin Khilji who wanted to exploit the cultivators and the shopkeepers while he, Gerasuddin Tughlaq thought the surest way to increase the revenue was not to leave the cultivators in despair, not to drive the cultivators in despair and rebellion by exorbitant, by increasing, by enhancing the taxes, but to bring more and more land under cultivation. This was his thinking. He led expedition to Warangal, Odisha, under Jonathan, who was his son, and Bengal expedition he led himself to suppress the revolt in Bengal, and he emerged there victorious. And when he was coming after the victory over Bengal, after bringing Bengal under his suzerainty. There was a huge gate prepared to welcome him by his son Zona Khan and accidentally he died under that gate. In 1325, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, Zona Khan with the title of Muhammad bin Tughlaq became the Sultan of Dari Sultanat under Tughlaq dynasty. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was brought up as a soldier but simultaneously it was also maintained to provide him the best possible literary knowledge. So he was not only a warrior, he not only had military skills but he had the literary knowledge also. So he was a different ruler. Muhammad bin Tughlaq implemented some policies. Jauddin Barni explains and gave light over these policies. He had given and explained his policies and today we will study some of the projects and policies of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. 
द फर्स्ट वन इज टैक्सेशन इन द दुआ दुआ वॉज अ वेरी फर्टाइल एरिया एंड मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक वॉन्टेड टू इंक्रीज इज रेवेन्यू बाय इंक्रीज इन द टैक्सेज इन द दुआ देर वॉज नथिंग रॉन्ग इन दिस बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली वेन ही इंक्रीज द टैक्सेज इन दुआ देर ऑकर फेमिन बिकॉज ऑफ द स्केसिटी ऑफ द रेनफॉल he instructed his officers to collect the taxes with all rigors and officers followed the orders but cultivators resisted to this and when it was not possible they abandoned their land and took to the highways and started robbery there when mohammed bin tughlaq got to know about all this he offered help in the form of advancing of loans to farmers and cultivators but it was done very late and because of such great delay all went in vain and this policy also this policy failed second policy was transfer of his capital in 1326 and 27 mohammed bin tughlaq transferred his capital from delhi to devagri and renamed devagri as daulatabad this was done because of certain reasons and the first reason was he was ruling a very vast and far flung empire and delhi was nearly to one corner of this great empire so according to geometrical conditions delhi was not at the center place uh, th this is also a scientific reason so he wanted to establish his kingdom in the center of the empire second reason is also a very good reason under delhi sultan all the northern kingdoms had been brought already but now after alauddin khilji the expedition to south had started taking place so to bring the south under the suzerainty of delhi sultanate this was not a wrong idea to bring the capital close to south there were certain other reasons also but these two reasons can not be denied so he ordered to transfer the capital from delhi to daulatabad and he not only moved his officers his own kingdom but he told all the people to move to daulatabad with all bag and baggage people of delhi irrespective of their religion whether hindus or muslims people were not ready to leave delhi because delhi was a charming city and there was no charm for devagri for anyone but people were forced all the people were forced to move to devagri dordavad people had to move when they established capital there after some time they discovered that they had committed a gross mistake by leaving 
Delhi abandoned and allowing giving free passes to the Mongol invaders in the northwest to come and plunder Delhi, Punjab and all the areas. So this policy was also a failure and they had to come back again to Delhi but Delhi had to Delhi to many years to regain his legacy. Third is introduction of token currency in 1329-30. There were certain reasons to introduce the token currency. He introduced token currency of copper and bronze coins and made them at par with gold and silver. The reasons to do this first was there was the scarcity of precious coinage, precious currency in the state treasury. The second reason which was very important, he had dreams to conquer Deccan, to conquer foreign areas and for all these expeditions he required huge amount of wealth. So he got a novel idea though it was also a failure but he got the idea and he implemented. He promulgated that copper coins would be legal tender. So all the people will fo would follow the copper coins instead of gold and silver coins. But he committed a gross mistake in implementing this policy also. And the mistake was very great mistake that he did not make it a monopoly of the state to mint the coinage. Had he implemented this monopoly, he would have been successful. But since he did not maintain it, every house of Delhi became a minting factory of the coinage. People used their copper and minted the coins of copper, brought their copper of the house in the market and took the gold and silver in the house and thereby emptying the treasury of the state. So this was a great failure of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. For this plan for the conquest of Khurasa, Muhammad bin Tughlaq was very ambitious ruler and he wanted to conquer Transoxiana, Khurasan, Persia and wanted to bring all these areas under his empire and for that he required a huge army and he organized it also. He had a standing army of 3,70,000 soldiers for the Khurasan expedition and wonderful thing was that he paid them in advance salary of a complete year but after some time it was discovered that it would be very possible to maintain such a huge army for a long period of time and unduly it would be strenuous for the state treasury. So he dropped the idea. This was also a very great failure of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Fifth was Kreider expedition in 1337-38. He ordered an expedition for a Hindu stronghold uh, 
of Karaizal, which was in the Kamau range of Himalaya. Though the expedition was successful, but Muhammad bin Tughlaq suffered losses here also because of mountainous and hilly regions and severe cold and heavy rainfall. Because of all these geographical conditions and geographical phenomena, he suffered losses and men also. So, because of these policies, he became very unpopular. He became popular and unpopular both because of these policies. When he became the Sultan of Delhi, under the dynasty, he had some similarity with Alauddin Khilji for the religious policies. He followed the Balwan's policy. He considered himself Jalla Ilahi. Sultan is the shadow of the God on the earth. He considered one who follows the Sultan, follows the God. So, such were the ideas. He did not refer in his Sultanate Khalifa. But during the last years of his empire, he implored to the Khalifa to grant him recognition as the Sultan of Delhi. And he inserted the name of Khalifa in his coinage. He followed the instructions of Ulema's while during the early years of his reign, he did not follow the instructions of Ulema's. He followed the secular policy. In fact, he was secular in the state and he did not allow ulemas to interfere in the political matters of the state. Very wonderful, very interesting. But in the last years, because he became very unpopular, he too refused to ulemas and khalifa. But all in vain because he had committed delay. Rebellions had started taking place. So he died in a disgusting position in 1351. He had become very unpopular. He is considered a man of opposites, a contradictory man, according to Ishi Prasad. But he was fortunate to have the friendship of Jauddin Barni, Farishta, and Ibn Batuta. He appointed Ibn Batuta as ambassador in China also. So, this way, the rule of great men ended, and the last word of Delhi Sultan of Tughla dynasty was Firoz Shah Tughla, and we study about Firoz Shah Tughla with Sayyid dynasty in the next class. Bye.